Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Today I want to visit the past and talk about my LC2 basic loadout. So stick around. All right, today I want to take a stroll down memory lane, back to a mystical time when gas was $1.04 a gallon, there was scandal in the White House, but politicians didn't inhale. The U.S. military camis were woodland and grown men wore them. We're talking about the Marine Corps in the late 1990s. Now back in 1995, my Marine Corps came alive. And during that time, the 782 gear or LC2 harness was standard issue and part of the Alice system. Now there's two things I want to do with this video. First off, I want to go ahead and show and talk about the old school harness, because I thought that would be cool. Second, and most importantly, I want to talk about the gear issue back in that day, 20 years ago, and how it relates to the 10 C's of survivability today. For those of you who continue to watch my videos, and I appreciate that, you're aware by now that I'm sold on the theory of the 10 C's. I'm a firm believer that they should be the building blocks or core of every single kit, and you just add to them from there, adding redundancies or multiples of certain items, health and comfort items, food, etc. Now the 10 C's is nothing new. It's just given that catchy name by Dave Canterbury to help you acknowledge them or remember them. But looking back at most of the standing armies, clear back to BC times, they carried some form of those 10 C's. Now they didn't have a compass, they didn't have a magnifying glass, but they had the other eight or nine. Even individuals or barbaric nomadic tribes, think of Utsi the Iceman, 5,000 year old mummified remains were found, and on him he had a flint knife, he had cordage, he had containers, he had some sort of cover, and what else did he have? Fire making materials, combustion. So all these items were found, and it's fact, it's a proven fact that we need those items to survive. So I want to take this video and I want to go ahead and relate or show you that even in my time 20 years ago, we carried those 10 items. Now they weren't called the 10 C's, but we had our version of them and they worked just as well. And there you have it. Like I mentioned before, the 10 C's, at a very minimum, the first five C's have been found all throughout recorded history or some version of them. They're items that we've always needed to survive and they're items that we always will need to survive. So let's go ahead and kick this off with my 1997 LC2 gear loadout. Enjoy. The LC2, sometimes referred to as 782 gear, Y harness or deuce gear, was introduced in 1973 and was the final step in the evolution of the LCE or load carrying equipment that began in 1956. It consisted of the equipment belt, harness, canteens, butt pack, IFAC or individual first aid kit, and ammo pouches. Let's go ahead and kick this off with our cutting tool. Now in bushcraft, I'm looking for a knife that's minimum four to five inches in length for a blade. I want that blade to pass all the way through the handle, which means it's a full tang knife. I want to have a sharp 90 degree spine in the back to process material or use with a ferro rod. And I want that blade most of the time to be 1095 carbon steel, like this Mora Garberg right here. During my time in the military, we had access to bayonets for our rifles, but we also had the option to carry a Marine Corps K-Bar. Now, for those of you that served in the military, you either support the front lines or you're on the front lines. This knife right here was developed in 1942, has a seven inch blade, rat tail tang, and its sole purpose was to keep you alive in combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat. This was a fighting knife. Moving right along to combustion or fire making. Now, if you were tactical, you're out in the field, combustion or fire making is not an option. Think about it. You're out there snooping and pooping, going up against Charlie. 
Are you lighting a fire to give away a position? Probably not. But let's say you needed a fire or some form of combustion. If you smoked, you got a lighter. If you didn't smoke, you can still bum that lighter. But check this out. Inside the pack of MREs, you have a condiments package. It's got moist towelette in here. It's got salt, pepper, coffee creamer, coffee. And most importantly, we had a paper book of matches. Now, along with those paper matches I just showed you, most of us had access to trioxin tablets. These were used primarily to warm up water, make coffee, tea, or even heat up food. Let's talk briefly about containers. Today with bushcraft and survival, we tend to preach and teach these large mouth or wide mouth stainless steel bottles. You can cook inside these, but most importantly, you can collect water and being that stainless steel, you can disinfect that water in this container. Now, back in the simpler time, we carried two plastic one quart canteens. Along with this, we had a metal container, our canteen cup, and stove. And then all you had to do was combine your canteen cup and your stove with the trioxin tablet we talked about earlier, and voila, you have warm water, coffee, tea, or warm food at your disposal. Now one of these small tablets would last about four minutes, and the large ones last around eight to nine minutes. One thing I want to briefly mention, I talked about at the very beginning of this segment on containers about a stainless steel bottle and collecting water and then disinfecting that water. Disinfecting the water by boiling renders inert or kills the viruses, bacteria, protozoa, and parasites. Now, like we talked about during combustion, if you're out there in the field, you're not lighting the fire to disinfect anything because you're gonna give away your position. So one thing that they issued to us was iodine tablets. Two of these tablets inside one quart canteen, wait about 30 minutes, you should be good to go. All right, continuing to move forward, let's talk about cordage. Today I teach and preach number 36 tarred bank line. This is a one pound roll and you get more bang for your buck or more cordage than you do carrying around a hundred foot of paracord. But back in my time, we had issued OD Green 557 strand paracord. It got the job done and it was great for all of your binding needs. And the last thing I want to talk about of the first five C's is cover. Let's go ahead and fast forward 20 years and you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I still default to the military poncho for all of my emergency shelter needs. Moving on to our compass. In all of my videos, you're gonna see a Sunto MC2 base plate compass. It's user-friendly and multi-use. You got a signal mirror and magnifying lens. But back in the day, we rolled out with the old school military Kamenga compass. It has tritium, which allows it to glow in the dark for about 10 to 15 years. These things were bomb-proof. They're a little bit more work to use them and they weren't as user-friendly, but they were bomb-proof. Now, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and post a card at the top of the screen. Click on that, it will take you to my compass videos and you can check those out.
Let's go ahead and move on to cotton material. Now for bushcraft and survival, one of the big things is thinking about your next fire. Because where I'm going, I might not have materials there to make that fire. And I always want multiple ways to produce a fire in case I need to. And one way to do that is with charred material or char cloth. So taking a piece of that 100% cotton, heating it up inside of a tin or metal container until it chars, you can then take flint and steel or a ferrocium rod, even the weakest spark will hit that char cloth or char material and it will start to burn. You can then take that material or that cloth, transfer it into a bird's nest or tinder bundle, blow it in the flame, and then transfer that into your fire leg. Now, like I mentioned during the combustion portion, we weren't concerned about making fires or thinking of our next fire because we were tactical. But I want to relate this information that the fact we didn't carry bandanas or shamogs during my time, but we did carry 100% cotton t-shirts. Now I'll be the first one to admit there's been a ton of technological advancements since my day, especially in hands-free technology like these headlamps right here. But back in my time, we were issued this piece of history right here, sometimes referred to as a moonbeam. This 2D cell flashlight, heavy as hell, robust, bulky, interchangeable lenses. I believe an incandescent light bulb was around 10 or 20 lumens, horrible but it got the job done. This version right here, I actually found on Amazon and they make these LED bulbs now. Which increase it from around 20 lumens to about 80 lumens. Boom. All right, we're almost done. For those of you that are still here, I appreciate it. Our next C is cargo tape. Now, in 2005, we had Gorilla Brand duct tape. It hit the market, made its way around the survival and bushcraft industry as one of the premier go-to tapes. Now, in my time, back in my day, we had something called 100 mile an hour tape, which is just a fancy name for duct tape. The final C I want to talk about is a canvas needle. Now this is simply a number 10 or a number 14 sail needle and its primary purpose in bushcraft and survival is gear repair, clothing repair. You could use it for an improvised compass needle if you absolutely had to and give you a nice north-south line. Or you could use it for medicinal, simply removing splinters or stingers from your skin. Combining this with the inner strands of say the 7 strand and 550 paracord will give you needle and thread for days. During my time in the military, we didn't carry number 10 or number 12 sail needles or use inner strands of paracord for string or any of that kind of stuff. But I'm telling you right now, gear repair and clothing repair were just as important. So we carried some sort of improvised sewing kit that would accommodate all of our gear repair or clothing repair needs. All right, so there you have it. Real quick, down and dirty, my equivalent to the 10 C's from 20 years ago. Now, last thing I wanna talk about or share with you is a lot of people carry first aid kits. So I found this on Amazon, actually. Brand new, new old stock from 1996. This would be the equivalent of my IFAC or individual first aid kit. Check this out. Welcome back. Old school 782 gear is outstanding and it stands the test of time. 
Now the point of this video was I wanted to give you a glimpse of my Marine Corps, who I am, and where I've come from. But most importantly, I wanted to stress the 10 C's. We've carried some version of them throughout history, we carry them today, and it's my personal opinion that those items should be the core of every single kit. Now, all the items that you've seen are available on my Amazon Influencer page under Old School Military Gear. That link will be inside the description box. Do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. This way you're never gonna miss a future video ever again. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm gonna catch you next time.